It's the National Football League on EA Sports, where division rivals will clash in the NFC North. It's the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers, and it's coming up next. This place first opened way back in 1957. We are inside legendary Lambeau Field here in Green Bay. Today we've got what's always a hard-hitting battle in the NFC North as it'll be the Minnesota Vikings taking on the Green Bay Packers. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. CD, it is officially a new era here in Green Bay. After a few years of Willie Woney with Aaron Rodgers, it is officially time to see Jordan Love quarterbacking the Green Bay Packers. And we'll find out what lessons he's absorbed along the way, how well he's mastered the playbook, the respect he's gained from his teammates in the locker room. We know that love is in the air in Green Bay. The key is what will love do through the air. Meanwhile, for the visiting Vikings, we know all about the skilled players on offense, but they're looking to make up some ground on the defensive side of the ball this season as they were second from the bottom in total defense a year ago. What they want to do is find a way to be more consistent on that side of the ball and not rely on making big plays late in games in order to secure victories. They want to be able to stop people earlier. That's what they're looking to do in 2023. It's showtime, baby. Ready. Here's Love looking to pass on the first play. And his first look is incomplete. That's an excellent play by the defender. He diagnosed that one. Close quickly. And he'll force the incompletion. So the incompletion, and now it's second and ten again from the 25-yard line. Love, they go play action now. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Love with it here, third and short yardage. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Here's Pat O'Donnell coming out for Green Bay on fourth down. Back deep, Brandon Powell. Take it in at the 22. 43 yards on the punt, seven yard return, and it will be Vikings ball first and 10. So here are the Vikings set to go to work, and they're led by the leading passer in the NFC a season ago. Now in his 12th year, sixth as a Viking, Kirk Cousins. Minnesota's new coaching staff really leaned on Cousins for leadership and production, and the longtime vet was up to the pressure. 29 touchdowns, 4,500 yards, and a 13-win season, his best as a starter. Captain Kirk, he's quietly been one of the league's most productive passers the last few seasons. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. They go play action, Cousins. And that nearly an interception here on this opening drive, but he gets a reprieve. It's third down. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has him staring at a third and ten. Cousins. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down, as that was not an easy one to hold on to. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. A guy coming off a career high in rushing yards last year. Here's Aaron Jones. And a nice run past the 30-yard line there. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. Now the fourth year man from BC, it's A.J. Dillon. And he is gonna lose yardage here. 
It'll be a loss of a yard, and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Ready? Love now. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Jordan Hicks. And he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. Well, he had to fit that into a pretty tight window over the middle. And, Charles, I think they were in zone defensively, weren't they? They certainly were. Nice read on your part. And sometimes the quarterback isn't fooled between zone and man. Sometimes just fooled by the type of zone that he sees. Because oftentimes those linebackers will vacate and run downfield with receivers. In this case, he played a pure zone and was in the wrong spot for the QB. And it's caught. Touchdown. Kirk Cousins on the connection to Justin Jefferson. And the Vikings have taken the early lead on the road here at Lambeau. A nice connection there, finding his target, and that'll put six up on the board. Just like they drew it up in their playbook and reiterated it on the sidelines, right? Perfect route, a good throw in the defense. They had no answer for that right there. Greg Joseph on for the extra point. He's got it, and the Vikings take a 7-0 lead. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Nixon elects not to return it, and this comes out to the 25. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. Not only are they in search of their first go. score, they're in search of their first first down in this ball game as they come up first and 10. Ready. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Ready. Ready. They'll run wide side with Jones. Able to slither by. And he'll fight for a couple as the tackle is made at about the 32. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Marked that down for a win in the defense's column. Completed out left to Dobbs. And he's going to have the Packers' first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. And already down seven to nothing after the touchdown a minute ago. So a three and out here would not be ideal for them. Nice job finding his receiver there. And they get the first down. On first and ten, Love forced out to his left. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a halt. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Ready, ready. Smith Red. Yellow, Lonnie, check white. Love looking to throw it. He's going to launch this deep for Watson. And that will be incomplete. Trying to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. Let's go. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. Ready? On third down, Love. That's caught by the rookie, Jaden Reed. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 41 yard line. And the play goes for 19 yards, gives him a new set of downs. Now a first down carry by Jones. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Ready, ready. Here's Love. His throw incomplete. Haven't been a corner that's worth this up yet that ever admits to worrying about man coverage. How about the play there, breaking that pass up. Check pink. Switch, yellow, opposite, green. On third down, here's Jones. No gain on the play there, and it'll bring up fourth down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. O'Donnell, he's on to punt as he gets this one away. 
And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. They've got a 7-0 lead in the football. Down the numbers. There he goes. Finding room at midfield. And he'll take this down to the 40-yard line. A big play there for Minnesota. 44 yards. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. The Vikings with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and 10. Play fake, Cousins. He lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Justin Jefferson, two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Joseph connects on the extra point, and it's now 14 to nothing. Pretty clean and simple there, just two plays, the long pass resulting in the touchdown on play number two. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Nixon elects not to return it, and this comes out to the 25. The Green Bay offense ready to take over. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. But at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling OK. On play action. Love to throw. Out of the backfield, this is Aaron Jones. And Jones going to have a Packers first down as he'll get this up past the 40. Seven yards there and a first down. Blue check. Smith red. Yellow. White. Check white. Check pink. Love with a give to Dillon. To the 43, second down. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. They follow up the gain of two with a gain of one that time. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Throwing. Love. And this one is incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Not many boos just yet from this home crowd, but they may be starting soon as I'm starting to detect an uneasy murmur through this crowd. This offense, they've been lifeless in this first half. And now here's another punting situation and a fourth down. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Justin Jefferson and the rest of this offense, they've got their helmets back on, and they're ready for this next series. He has certainly made the most of his catches so far, both of them going for touchdowns here in half number one. And we've never met a team that doesn't talk about getting off to a fast start and featuring guys that they want to have the ball early. We're seeing both of those come into play here. Off to an incredible start. Got their future guy going, and now everyone else should have opportunities. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. They'll go Madison up the middle. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. Calling no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. And they are going to set up shop at the 32-yard line. Well, he's certainly not been afraid to take some chances downfield. Now, look, it's paid off for him a couple of times. That time, not so fortunate. And that's where I want to start, what you said. It's paid off a couple of times. So his aggressiveness 
has been good for his offense for the most part. So he throws an interception there. No one likes that, but I would not rein him back in. The return on investment thus far has been pretty good. Two touchdowns to one interception. So the completion good for six yards, okay. and it's second down. Love going to give this one to Jones. Down right around the 25. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third and three. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. Got Dobbs over the middle. And he's going to have a Packers first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. Two minutes to play, first half, it's 14 to nothing. Ready, Took nearly the entire first half, but a first red zone opportunity for him here. First and 10 right at the 20. Love. And his throw here's incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Off the play fake, Love. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. The linebacker, Jordan Hicks, flying in there for the sack. There's a reason inside linebackers are often captains of a defense. They call the signals, they have the opportunity to affect the game in coverage, against the run, and of course on blitzes. Living in the best of both worlds here. Already has an interception. Now he gets to record a sack, too. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with a short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. So, Charles, they get to them with their first turnover of the game and then make it hurt a little bit extra with a field goal. And anytime you get the ball up, what's the first thing a coach tells his defense? Defense. Don't let them score off of this. You've got to put out the fire. In fact, in 2021, that's what one NFL coach termed his defense. The firemen. Go out there, guys, and don't let them put some points on the board. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. Another nice gain. That's now 30 yards between those last two plays. It is fun to watch the big man work the middle of the field. How about that post route there? Did an excellent job of getting his head around to look the football in and gain significant yardage. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. To throw, Cousins. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Rasul Douglas picks it, and the Packers are going to have it here at their own 15. Second straight drive now here, Charles, that him ended with an interception. And I just wonder, because I don't think it's going to rattle him necessarily, but I also wonder if it's going to unnerve him a little bit. Does it lead to another one, or does he find a way to pull it together and become sharp again? The Packer offense heading back go. for one final go. first half drive. And yeah, the ball backed way up, so thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball, just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. So we hit halftime with our visitors, the Vikings, taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports Halftime Report. This has certainly been a fun one to watch so far. We knew this was going to be a battle, and we have not been disappointed. This is the kind of game that could wind up hinging on which side could play mistake-free football the rest of the way.
And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Out come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half, they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities. And, that will get and now the rookie's free. Still on his feet. Inside the 20. Touchdown, Vikings. Jordan Addison, 73 yards. And the Vikings come right out of the locker room and score here in the opening minute of the third quarter. Great corner out there. Not only able to catch it, turn it upfield, and get into the end zone. It usually involves a little bit of an extra move, doesn't it? You've got to get them thinking that you're moving to the middle of the field, then you're breaking away to that corner. Boy, that was well executed. Joseph on for the extra point. And it's 21-3. to three. Well, the offense wasn't out there for a long time, but they were out there for a good time. One play, and they're able to hit pay dirt. Now Joseph tees it up to kick off following the touchdown. Nixon elects not to return it, and this comes out to the 25. So here are the Packers now. They get set for their first possession of half number two. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Check white. Check pink. From the shotgun, a give to Jones. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback on the expected passing situation. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Well, this is just a continuation of what we saw in the first half. So much for the fresh start to begin the third quarter. Still off target throws, no rhythm throwing the football, and obviously no touchdown scored in this game. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Oh, the return is Powell. Eight yards on the return following a punt of 41. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the, and the third interception thrown by Cousins. And to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. Well, still down quite a bit here, several scores, but yeah, at least that's a start, Charles, getting the interception here. And look, we're still in the third quarter, so this thing not done yet. You're right about that, Brandon. This defense, they haven't quit on this game. They stayed with it and got an interception and handed the ball back to their offense. And what you wonder about is the team that just threw that interception, they've got to be careful about developing a sense of complacency and thinking this game is over. Hunt, hunt. Now flags will come in. I think this, this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Defense. Yeah, the movement there coming from the middle of the line. And you understand he wants to get off the ball quickly, but the ball's right in front of him. He has to watch it move first. Green, black swap, blue check. Now love. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Romeo Dobbs, a 16-yard touchdown. And the Packers take the interception on defense and convert it into six points. They went empty backfield, all their weapons out wide. So they're... And now before we get to the extra point, remember all touchdowns do have to be confirmed by the replay official. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. 
So hey, take ready. away the touchdown there as that's going to be ruled an incomplete pass. Ready, ready. On second down, it's Jones. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. And give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. To throw now. Here's Love. Pass incomplete. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks, and he seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. And a minuscule gain of maybe a yard from the six to the five. Another modest gain there on that one. And I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner? Because they have to be extremely And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, Packers. Jordan Love, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Packers are able to make some inroads here to that deficit. Anders Carlson now for the point after. It's up and good, and the lead is down now at 11. It's 21 to 10. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it's finished off with a five-yard touchdown run. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and 10. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. The end result, 21 yards. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. They'll send a receiver here in motion right. And he'll get it here on the jet sweep. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. Rashawn Gary that time through the line and getting the tackle for loss. So the first down run lost a couple. Now they come up second and 12. Draw play, Madison. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And great blocking downfield as he's got this almost to the 35-yard line. 17 yards, first down, Vikings. Muscle damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure you're back. You spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Lambeau. It's the Vikings in possession of the football and the lead. They'll be looking to add to that total as we begin quarter number four. Cousins now to throw on first down. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. And the Packers are right back in this football game. Now with that interception, you feel like we've got a ball game again. Remember, a two-score contest and still time left here in the fourth. And in the old days, not too long gone either. Throwing the ball here would have been an absolute no-no, but the way the game's played now, 
throw it, it makes sense. You just have to be careful when you put it in the air. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one possession game. Yes. Can't get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. Off the option, it's Jones. And there just continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. The Packers on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. Here it's third and three. That's complete to Dobbs. And he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays harder to move it. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Jordan Love ready on first down here. Setting up the screen here, Aaron Jones. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. Now a second down throw for Love here. This one swung out here to Jones. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Love's throw finds its target, Dobbs. Ball spotted at the 45. Here's second down and three. There's a ball thrown right side and complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 43. The Love's throw brought in by Watson. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time and another first down. To pass, here's Jordan Love. He finds his man, complete. That's Reed. Plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. And now, defensively, they're going to burn their first time out. Remember, they get an extra time built in coming up here shortly at the two-minute warning. They'll come up first and ten here. First down, love to pass. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. Another try from the 14 on second and 10. On second down, Dillon. He's going to get four out of this as he's down to the 10-yard line. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Packer football here as we welcome you back. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Boy, well, here's a big one. You can just feel it. This is third down now. Love. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. That means it's just one last chance left, and this has to be a first down or a touchdown, or this game's over. So here now, the rookie sixth-rounder, Anders Carlson, for the Packer field goal. This a 27-yard attempt here. And his kick it is right there. It's good, and that'll make this an eight-point game. So you knew one way or another that they needed the two scores. They get the easy one out of the way. Now they'll get the ball back, hopefully. Yeah, and the question is, how do you accomplish that? Do you onside kick it? Or since you have all three timeouts, do you kick it deep? To me, I'm playing field position with all three timeouts. I kick it deep and try and pin them back there. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Well, they can smell victory, partner. They can see it on the horizon, but certainly we're not done yet here. Defense still has three timeouts, and obviously this is a very slim lead they're holding on to. And let's face it, the easiest way to get this done, challenge your ground game, challenge your offensive line, your tight ends, your receivers, anyone who's going to lay down a block. Don't let there be penetration, because they're going to stop the line of scrimmage and maybe bring extra people to the ball. If you can do that, make them burn their timeouts, run out the clock, life will be good. But if you really want to gamble a little bit, a quick play action, quick throw, might be able to get it done. Just make sure it's not incomplete and stop the clock. Now the Packers are going to burn their third and final timeout. 
And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And they will take a knee here. Second and 11. Running from the shotgun with Madison. And now the question everyone's wondering, look at the clock, late fourth quarter, do they put the ball in the air here on third? I don't. I run the football. I tell my offensive line, no leakage up front. I want my running back hit as I hand the ball off to him. I don't want any type of an issue. But if I am going to throw it, quick throw, out to the perimeter, maybe one of my best receivers running a quick slant or something like that. Cousins is going to take this one down to a knee and end it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something. And they, <laughs> they did in this one. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. And a little bit of a surprise, they lose the turnover battle, but wind up winning the ball game. And this is very unusual because you know all teams stress winning the turnover battle as a key indicator to winning ball games. So when you get something that goes against the grain, like the one we saw here, it's quite the oddity. Now let's face it, they'll be very happy that they pulled this off, but they do know that in the future, they've got work on taking care of the football because this won't happen very often. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation.